ਕੀ ਕਰ ਰਿਹਾ ਡਾਕਟਰ ਜਾਨ ਨੂੰ ਹੈ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਹੋਊਗਾ ਹallelujah god is the lord is faithful tell your neighbor this morning as a neighbor the god that you serve is a faithful god trust him come and tell your neighbor the neighbor trust his faithfulness yeah don't doubt the faithfulness of god trust his his faithfulness hallelujah a few announcements that i want to give this morning before we share the word of god um on wednesday we are coming for real church hallelujah i'm inviting everybody for real church from 6 o'clock in the evening all the way up until 8 o'clock amen hallelujah don't miss this service um and and the lord will be good to us hallelujah so let's come together for real church can i can i get an amen, amen. hallelujah and uh on saturday on saturday we are still meeting for morning glory amen um the lord spoke to me this morning um even this saturday when we come we are praying for the leading of the holy spirit this saturday when we come the lord says pray for the leading of the holy spirit pray for the leading of the holy spirit we read a scripture yesterday um scripture says that they those that allow themselves to be led are the children of god but they first need to allow themselves to be led so we need to allow ourselves as a church to be led by the holy spirit hallelujah hallelujah Jesus says he will be he will dwell in you this holy spirit he will lead you he will guide you he will be your help this holy spirit is many things we are praying every saturday morning and we're going to be teaching on it the holy spirit our sustain our guide hallelujah the lord spoke to me yesterday and he says many of us desire to get there but we don't know how but the holy spirit knows how that's why he needs to lead us that's why moses says i can see canaan but if your presence is not going with me i'm not going hallelujah the holy spirit is the navigator blessed be the name of the lord amen hallelujah hallelujah so we are coming this coming um 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 saturday in the name of jesus amen um and then on saturday also at 9 o'clock Saturday at 9 o'clock we will be having men with destiny conversations all the men hallelujah inviting all, all the men all the men you know yourselves those that are not here let them know that the conversations are open we are coming together from 9 all the way up until uh, 11 i think that's what i wrote there yeah all the way up until 11 um we will be talking to the man blessed be the name of Jesus Christ amen it's going to be happening right here at church amen okay amen. amen and then on the 30th i believe friday the 30th friday the 30th we will be having couples connect conversations for all the couples hallelujah hallelujah i'm waiting for that poster to show up hallelujah It's Friday the 30th, right? For all the couples, can I get an amen from all the couples? Yeah, the second quarter of the year, we are going to be very intentional with the couples. And we will be talking to the couples. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're inviting all the couples Friday the 30th. It's free entrance. So bring your spouse, bring your partner if you're going to get married. This is yours. Um you need to be here so that we can equip you for the next level. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. That's happening on Friday the 30th and then Sunday the 2nd. Sunday the 2nd we're going to be having our kingdom Sunday. Hallelujah. Can I get an amen? amen. We're going to be having our kingdom Sunday. This is very imperative that the church needs to understand this. You know that every 6 months we need to be paying our 150,000 towards the building. Uh, uh we just had a conference right now which was very costly. and uh, i think they will give you those um those stats very soon in terms of how the conference went financially so but upsala umshito tsola pile 
Amen. So on, on, on Sunday the second, uh, we we pray for the grace of the Macedonian church to operate in this house. Hallelujah. That we give them more and we trust God and see if we're gonna die. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. So I want to encourage each one of us to partner with the church. By the end of this year, this building is going to be paid up. Amen, somebody. The building is going to be paid up. Amen. And uh, we, it's not going to be paid up from anywhere else. It's going to be paid up from here. Hallelujah. The Lord will raise men and women that will give wholeheartedly and give with cheerful hearts. So that's what we're going to be doing on, um, uh, on Sunday, um, the second. Uh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor and say, neighbor, partner with the church with your money. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Um, so that's what we're doing on uh, on Sunday. Blessed, blessed be the name of the Lord. I think I've covered everything else uh, I needed to cover for this morning. I don't have much time. Um, we want to appreciate the young people. I saw there was a huge turnout of the GI um, hiking. I think over 33 young people turned up for for the hiking. Can we just appreciate the young people? Um, as, um, if, if there's a ministry that is very faithful about giving reports, it's the young people. I was reading their report after the hiking and the suggestions that uh, they were bringing up, very important suggestions that were brought up. And I want to say to the young people, it fell on good ear and we will execute on it in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just read a statement. We wanted a meeting with no pastors. I, was, I felt offended. I was gone. What's, what's wrong with some of us? Some of, some of you see us as pastors, but we are still human beings. Eh? Hallelujah. We are still human beings. The same things that you are going through and you think you are not going through, we go through the same thing. And, and sometimes you need, you need a place uh, that is free, that is unjudgmental where you can just talk. Amen, somebody? And, and I know you need it. So we're going to set up that place um, so that we, we can, the Lord can usher us into that healing in the name of the Lord. Amen? Hallelujah. Um, so let's, 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 we're going to do that. But thank you very much, young people, that you have turned out. Uh, I heard there was a CIC today that spoke that next year we must rest. I don't know rest from art because we are still young. Uh, and we were told we must rest. So we will rest next year. And let's see these young people that are being spoken about that are full of power. Uh, that will take up this podium. Uh, and I kid you not, we're going to do it next year. We have you. We're going to do it next year. Let's rest and let's see the young people do their thing. If they mess up, we will step in and correct. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Can you afford me about 30 to 40 minutes of your time? And uh, let me share the word of God in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't worry about the child. She's not crying. She's singing because the mother is a singer. So she's just singing. The parents can't afford to buy her a mic. So as a grandfather, I'll buy her the mic myself. And she will keep quiet. Hallelujah. Let's share the word of God together. Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. That's Second Corinthians chapter 5 and, and verse 17. And that's where we're going to start. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1. That's where we're going to start this morning. We also have First Kings chapter 19, verse 19 up to verse 22. And for the next 40 minutes, when people are standing, just stand with them. Just stand with them. We stand in this church for the reading of the word. Hallelujah. We honor the word of God. Amen. Yeah, let's, let's read as quickly as we can in Jesus' name. Chapter 5, verse 17 of 2 Corinthians, New King James Version. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. He has given us the ministry of what? Of reconciliation. Read verse 19 again. Verse 19. 
That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. He has committed to us. The word of reconciliation. The word of what? Reconciliation. That's not where I asked them to read, but I just felt, let's read it. The Lord has committed to us. The word of the reconciliation. Word of reconciliation. Somebody say the word of reconciliation. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1. Just verse 1. New King James Version. Read, Mama. Verse 1. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. To everything there's a what? There is a season. A time. For every purpose, for every purpose under heaven. Under heaven. Amen. Um, First Kings chapter 19 and verse 19 to 22. First Kings chapter 19 and verse 19 to 22. Chapter 19, verse 19 of First Kings. So Elijah went from there and found Elisha, son of Shaphat. He was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen, and he himself was driving the 12th pair. Elijah went up to him and threw his cloak around him. El Elisha then left his oxen and ran after Elijah. Let me kiss my father and mother goodbye. He said, and then I will come with you. Go back, Elijah replied. What have I done to you? So Elisha left him and went back. He took his yoke of oxen and slaughtered them. He burned the plowing equipment to cook the meat and gave it to the people. And they ate. Then he set out to follow Elijah and became his attendant. Father, we stand this morning. May you speak to us as you have been speaking since the beginning of this service. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, anoint my lips of clay, risen through my mind, O oh God. In the name of the Lord, I pray that your word comes out to heal. Your word comes out to restore. But most importantly, may your word come out, almighty God, to bring us out and pull us out from the deep muddy clay. In Jesus' mighty and precious name, I pray. And let the church shout and say, Amen. Let the church shout and say, Amen. You may take your seat in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Part two that we're going to share this morning. And we are talking about, um, this is our topic, step up. Somebody say step up. Okay, let's try again. Somebody shout and say step up. Step up. Shake your neighbor and say neighbor. It's time to step up. Tell your neighbor and say neighbor. It's your time. Step up. Uh, come on, tell your neighbor and say neighbor. It's your time. Step up. Step up. Come and shake your neighbor one more time and say, neighbor, step up. Find another neighbor and say, neighbor, step up. Step up. Uh, come and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, you can do better. Step up, step up, step up. Yeah, come and tell your neighbor, say, if you need to stand up and find another neighbor, stand up and then find a neighbor and say, neighbor, you need to step up. You have been slacking. Step up. Step up. I need my monitor. Step up. Step up. Step up. Step up. Step up. Hallelujah. The word step up has got two meanings. Number one, it means to come forward for a particular purpose. Write this thing down. To come forward for a particular purpose. Hallelujah. What does it mean? To do what? Uh, talk to me. To do what? For a what? Which therefore means that you do not step up without a purpose. You don't step up because you feel like it. You don't step up because you see others stepping up. You must first discover the purpose and step up to the purpose. Somebody shout and say, step up to the purpose. Somebody shout and say, step up to the purpose. Therefore, it's one thing to be excited about the prophecy. It's one thing to be excited about the word of God spoken over your life. But need I submit to the church this morning that every word that is spoken over your life will require you to step up. The church did not hear me. I say every word that is spoken over your life, it will require you to step up. You must understand 
that the word, when the word is spoken, when the word is spoken, it hangs around in the air. It hangs around right here. But it needs you to activate it. For you to activate the word, you need to step up to the level of the word. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody's not hearing me. This. Somebody shout, shake your neighbor as a neighbor. You need to step up to the level of the word. You ask children. Some of us, we were asked. I don't know about you. But when we were young, we were asked, when you grow up, what do you want to be? And many of us, we spoke a lot of things. Eh? I want to be a doctor. I want to be this. When we arrived at university, we found out that the things that we wished for demand a lot out of us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we say, no, I want to be a doctor. But do you know that being a doctor will need you eight years or six years of doing nothing? Oh, but just study. When others have studied IT for two years and they are working and they are driving, but it requires you to step up. Be careful of just making a wish of things that you are not ready to step up for. Ah, hallelujah. Some of you want to get married. And I want to, let me tell you something. Marriage is not pop and flays. You need to step up. Marriage is not having sex. You need to step up. Children are born in marriage. The more they are born, tell me, I've got five of them. The more they are born, the more expensive they become. It's not about just giving birth. It's easy to become a dad, but it's a different thing to become a father. It's easy to release a sperm. But you need to step up to that coming. Hey, I wish I, wish I can just get married. I wish I can just drive. Hey, the bigger the engine, the bigger the step up is needed. Oh, don't look at us, look at us driving small cars. You think we don't love the big cars. But we are not ready to step up. I, we are waiting for the right time to step up. As long as it can get me to point A and point B. Those that are driving GTIs and going, pa, let them go through, pa. When they through, pa, it's 100 rand gone. I am talking to you. Somebody shout and say, step up. 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 You look at the brother singing in front. I wish he was mine. You are not at his level. If you want to come here, you must step up. The young people of 1977, they were tired of apartheid and they stepped up and the Hector Peter Center and they say we can die. The guns were there. They did not have the guns, but they stepped up and in 2023, it needs the young people that are going through the economic meltdown, that are going through the struggles of today, who saying we are tired of being employed and being employees. We are stepping up. Ah, uh ah, -uh, ah, uh ah, -uh. you just celebrate June 16 and you don't step up. I saw somebody posting and says, Hey, this June 16, we must not wear uniform. Let's step up, let's wear graduation regalia. And some of us, I was laughing at myself. I was like, I must go look for my preschool regalia. Eh? And somebody said to me, it will not fit. And I said, no, but I will carry it by myself. Because that's the only regalia that I have. <laughs> and uh, we need to step up. How can we be a church that is not educated? A church that is screaming but not educated. Because we pray a lot, but we are not ready to step up. You wake up in the morning, you lazy around. The whole day you did not bath. The whole day you did not brush your teeth. You are waiting for the day to get employed. That's the day you're going to bath. Hey now! Who will employ you when you can employ yourself? The church of Jesus Christ must step up. Stop waiting for free peace. You need to step up. I, 
and uh, step up. You are waiting for the government to give you jobs. How can they give you jobs when they can't even give you electricity? Step up. Uh. Go and buy some few sweets. Take sweet and mix with water and wait for summer and go and sell ice blocks at school and people laugh at you and say you've got a degree and you are selling at school. Tell them, I'm stepping up. I'm stepping up. I'm tired of sitting in my lawyers. I'm stepping up. The Indians have opened at, at uh, what, what do you call this place? Hapa, hapa, hapa. Oriental Plaza. You don't even know the gate there. Others are coming. Excuse me, it's sensitive. But let me say it. Others are coming all the way from Zimbabwe. They are coming from Somalia. They come and stock here. They sell for you. You stay here. You sell nothing. You are waiting for 350 at the end of the month. 350 that is crumbling your mind, crumbling your potential because you are not ready to step up. You even go to Toy Toy for the 350. For 350. Hi, man. You can do better, man. I'll shake your neighbor and say, Hi, man. I'll tell your neighbor and say, Hi, man. We can do better. You earn the whole salary. And you eat the whole money. By the feet, everything is finished. Abashoni. In this day and age, and you are not saving anything. We need to step up, guys. We need to step up. I'm here to challenge you to step up. Every time we watch news, we hear government this, government this, government this, government this. And now they are doing their own thing. What are you doing? You can talk about their corruption. It's what they know. That's what they're doing. It. What are you doing? Uh, how, how, and, uh, let, let's talk, guys. How, how long have we been talking about corruption? Has it stopped? Actually, the more you talk about it, the worse it becomes. What are you doing to become a change agent? How are you stepping up your game to bring a change? How will the generation to come remember you? The youth of 1977, they did their thing. That's why you can walk into Sainton today. That's why you can eat everywhere. What are you going to give the next generation? The next generation does not need makeups. The next generation does not need stilettos. The next generation that needs innovators. Young people that will stand up and break out of the box and start to be innovative and start to be creative and says we are passing to the next generation a mentality of entrepreneurship a mentality of stepping up the game your ultimate goal in life is to become a housewife housewife must go hand in hand with house husband Who has been hired to work for you? When now you just wake up in the morning, I'm going for tea at Tasha's. Listen to me and listen to me very well. Our, our grandfather's generation, women were meant to sit at home. Listen to me. Let me see all the women that are waking now. Stand up. If you're waking, I'm not saying if you're employed, if you are waking. What's that if you're employed? Stand up. Ah, even if you're employed. Ah, stand up. Yeah. You're working. Stand up. Ah, hey, hey. I don't want people to leave my church. Hey. <laughs> stand up. Stand up. Listen to me. Your, your grandmothers, not even your mothers, some of you. Your mothers are working. Some of you. Your grandmothers never used to work. Actually, let me use this term. They were never employed. They were working at home. I, talk to me, talk to me. Huh? They were never used to work. But let me tell you something. There was a woman one time who said enough is enough. For how long will I be a beggar? 
So how long will I wait for somebody to come back from Johannesburg while I'm seated here? When he comes back, he comes back with another wife. And this woman rose up. I don't know who she is. I must go and study history. I must find the first woman who started working. Rose up and says, I'm going to do it myself. And started working. You, you who are standing here are a result of somebody who said enough is enough. I'm going to step up. That's it. Now hear me and hear me well. When you go to work, when you are saying I'm going to work, you are going to step up because the workplace was only meant for males. Huh? Back in the days, those that are old enough will tell you, we never used to have women policemen. I mean police. It was just policemen. That's why it's easier to say policemen. Policewoman sounds... Oh. But haven't you seen a woman holding a gun at the whole block? She said, why? Because she's stepping up. Let me tell you something. When you've got too many choices, you will never step up. When there are choices available for you, you never think out of the box. When you choose one to eat, I want to eat paloni, I don't want paloni, I want Russian. I don't want Russian, I want fish fingers. I don't want fish fingers, I want cushy. I want this, I want sushi. You will never think out of the box, but you must be closed out into a place where you've got no choice so that you can be able to think and step up the game. I fear for the generation of today. Because we are so much used to handouts in such a way that the handouts have corrupted us in such a way that we, we feel entitled to them. And now, even the church wants to apply for funding. The church wants to be funded. By who? I don't know. Because even the church is lazy to step up. Somebody trying to say step up. Somebody trying to say step up. Somebody trying to say step up. You are not. The, listen to me, young woman. You are not the only one who has been dumped. Hi. No, let's talk the truth, guys. Step up. I. No, a season of crying can, must be limited. You can't cry for three years. Oh. No, every time we see you. Every time. Every time. These days we avoid you. No, you know why we are avoiding you? Because we are saying, step up! Uh, you go around carrying a platter. He doesn't love me. Uh, you're not the only one. Even as we are preaching, they don't love us. Step up! Uh, shake your neighbor as a neighbor. Step up. Uh, yeah, and, uh, shake your neighbor as a neighbor. He's talking to you. Tell your neighbor as a neighbor. He's talking to you. Step up! You see, you see how the economy is right now. You see how the economy is. Some of us will lose our jobs. But it's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. Oh, are you the first one to be unemployed? Let me tell you that when you lose your job, it's a choice to go back home. Teacher, stand up. Where do you come from? Eh? How many times do you go home? Twice a year. When now you come here from Fender? Every weekend. Hey, I miss my mom. Hey, I miss my aunt. And you look at the person. With, with which money are you using? You are using other people's money. When you just hear somebody going to Venice, come here, lift. Come here, lift. Stand up. Right, stand up again. Come, 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 come. Come, 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 come. Come, I need to teach the church. Come, come, come. Join me here on the, on the stage. You, come. Come here, come here, come here. Come here. We're in the Albertino. Come here. Stand here, Albertino. Stand here, teacher. Yeah. Now, look at these two women. Huh? Now, now watch here. I'm going to brainwash you. Close your eyes. 
Close your eyes. <laughs> now watch. Look at this one. Now imagine you don't know them. Ne? You have never met them. Eh? You meet them in center. Where does he come from? No, country base. Where does he come from? Uh -uh, not uh -uh. <laughs> not that. Well, we must deal with him. Move closer, move closer. Let me use this. Hey, now what about you? funny. But when they're worshiping, you know, we're not funny. Now watch it. Watch it, guys. When the two are walking together, you don't tell who comes from Zimbabwe, who comes from South Africa. They look the same. They're both women. And uh, both of them have got the ability to give birth. Both of them have got the ability to make money. And both of them have got the ability to commit suicide. The difference between the two will be the decision that each one of them makes. Watch. She comes from Zimbabwe. I don't know her background. I don't know how many siblings she has. I don't know whether the mother is still alive or the father is still alive. I don't know. What I know is teacher. You're not hearing me. You know why? This is the version she chooses for me to know. She might have the struggles at home. This one, very famous at church. Eh? But this one, uh, this one I know a lot. I know a lot. Don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. By makeups and laughing and whatnot and whatnot. But let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. She can make a decision in South Africa where there is abundance of, of opportunities. Where there's abundance of opportunity to sit down. And the mama, I the mothers of the church will come and pray for her and feel sorry for her. Bomukundi, the friends, the sisters, they will go, ah, oh, man. But what is the difference between her and her? There's no difference. Listen to me, church. Listen to me. Listen to me. Where she is, she decided to be there. It's a decision she made. Some of you say, but pastor, you don't know my background. And all of us have got background. Oh, all of, I used to eat pap mixed with water, mixed with salt. What are you telling me? And we, we used to go and sleep. We did not start with suits. It's a choice. I don't have a graduation regalia. I only have certificates, but I manage people. People call me boss. It's a choice. It's a choice. Stop blaming your background for everything. Your parents have done what they could. They ended here. It's upon you whether you want to step up or you want to step down. And if you want to step down, step down and leave us. We will come from Zimbabwe and take your riches. We will come from Nigeria. You, you call it xenophobia. No, we are just working. Whether we are corrupt or not corrupt, but we, are, or we all have brains. We are doing that you also have capabilities to do. Somebody shout and say, step up. Somebody shout and say, step up. You cannot earn a salary of 20,000 and drive a GTI. And tell me you are blessed. No, you are not blessed. You are suffering. Mayaga, stand up. Come, come, come. Come, 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 come. You must sign this one. Appreciate you. That's what we're doing. How many, how many times do you come to church? No, that's fine. Tell, tell them the truth. Don't worry. How many times do you come to church? Uh, maybe once in three, four months. Where are you 
Where are you exactly? Tell me the location. Where are you on a Sunday? Uh, Rustenburg. Uh, where? Where? I want to know where. Where? Uh, this man. Not really educated. And now, I want to teach you something. Not really educated. Eh? Weekends, he's not here. No, don't be fooled by the suits. He's underground. 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 He's underground doing things, doing things that me and you have got the abilities to do. No, me and you can still go to, uh, 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 what do you call, uh, um, uh, what do you call, Diamond Walk in St. Sunday. And we're moving around Louis Vuittons, wearing fake Louis Vuittons, but we're looking at the real one. And we look like we have, yet we don't have. Why? Because we choose to sit on our lawyers. We choose to be comfortable. We do not want to grow. Because we don't want to step up. Huh? If I can ask this man how many cars he has, you'll be shocked. But let me tell you something. To go underground is a choice. Now he fixes generators, he fixes this. A lot of things that he does. I never knew he has got these things. But people will never know you until you step up to be known. No one knew David, even if he was anointed. That's a sermon for next week. Now look here. Look here. Until she tells us, my name is teacher. What do you have to sign in again? What's your name? A song God, huh? I come from, I come from Zimbabwe. Huh? Now we know where she comes from. And we're like, huh? Can Zimbabwe produce such beautiful people? Watch. It's a decision she made. Hello? South Africa can still produce beautiful people, but that are doing nothing about their beauty. Go. They all, she's got the brains. She's got the car. That car can carry things and go around. After church, she can open a boot and she's selling. And no one will know that she has been retrenched. You want to announce to the whole church. I don't know whether you want us to collect offering for you. Let me tell you what we are going to do. Breaking news. We are going to pray for you. And say, here it says 200 rand to buy lunch. It's done. From there onwards, you step up. I did not ask her to stand, but it's a choice. She's making. And some of you are like her. When people are laughing, you must make a choice. To say, I'm stepping up. I'm tired of sitting in my laurels. I'm stepping up. I'm tired of sitting in my pain. I'm stepping up. I'm tired of sitting in my past. I'm stepping up. I'm tired of sitting in my problems. I'm stepping up. We never knew you could walk. Somebody shout and say, step up. Step up. Let's go to scripture. They're close. Elijah hides himself by the cave and prays to the Lord and says, Lord, it's enough. Kill me. Finish here. And the Lord says, hey, your job is not done. Wake up. Eat. You still need to anoint the son of Shaphat. You also need to anoint Jehu. You also need to anoint Elisha. I, my, my, I said, El Elisha. I was like, oh my God, run to education. Elisha. Elisha. My God. Like really. Yo. Elisha. Now, God speaks to Elijah and says, you need to anoint Elisha. Now watch it. Let's go to scripture and I'll show you. When the Bible says in verse number 90, so Elijah went from there and found Elijah. It was not the other way around. Elisha. Say Elisha. Elisha. <laughs> Elisha does not go looking for Elijah. It is Elijah that goes looking for Elisha. Watch, watch. 
What was Elisha doing? Go to scripture. Read mom. Read mom. He was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen. Now watch. This must tell us that Elisha came from probably a well-to-do background. Because if they had 12 oxen, which means this family was rich. But Elisha does not choose to stay at home and be a foreman. Does not choose to stay at home and eat what the parents are doing. He says, I want to be part and parcel of the work. I must be far. I know that I've got a destiny. I know that there's a place I need to be. But when the place, when the appointment comes, it must not find me seated. It must find me doing something. And he himself was driving the 12th. Ah, read it again, read it again. And he himself was driving the Read it again, pair. Mama. Huh? And he himself was driving the truck. He pair. himself was driving our Akorima. This is the tractor of those days. He was driving the oxen. 12 oxen, he was driving them. And he says, I must be doing something. If, if I want to step up to my calling, I need to take the first step and show that I have got ability to where I'm supposed to be. If you heard me, you were going to give God a praise right there. You see, the problem with us is that we want to be in places that we have not lived yet and showcased that we've got the ability to be there. That's why God is going to kill you in the desert because he has removed you from Egypt but you do, have not shown yourself approved to enter Canaan and he's going to raise a generation of the Joshua's who will not complain. You are a church but you complain about everything. I remember during COVID here. During COVID. When COVID struck 26th of March. On a Sunday, we went live, we were at home. But, uh, but, uh, at one time, I was like, you know what, there's no altar in my house. This thing is done. I'm not going live anymore in my house. I'm going live from church. I think we had already built the stage here. And I remember some of the people <laughs> that are supposed to come help me. I was like, oh, you're on your own. It's too dangerous there. We are not coming. I'm like, no, if you're not coming, it's fine. I'm going by myself. Because I understood. If I don't step up, this church is going to disappear into thin air. After COVID, there will be no church. If I don't step up. I can be like others and use an excuse. There is COVID. And uh, what am I saying this morning? Just because others are using excuses, please don't take excuses and apply them for themselves. For yourself. Because you are not them. Elisha was plowing. The question this morning is, what are you doing? I, 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 Jamaica Pool was born. No, we, we can see the suits. Ah, you are a fine young man. But the, the question is, after the suits, what are you doing? And uh, women are no longer impressed by deep voices. Women are impressed by deep pockets. What are you doing? What are you doing? Huh? You are a man, you are married, you come back late because you are avoiding conversations at home to tell you that electricity is finishing. What are you doing? Huh? You have been working for, for three years now. What do you have to show for it? Only pictures on Instagram, nothing. Step up, man. Step up, church. Somebody shout and say, step up. Shake your neighbor and say, I'm No, it's going to be like this until the end of the year. We need to step up. We need to step up. I was, I was, I was talking to Sai one day. I think it was during the conference. So when I was talking to Sai, I was like, uh, so I was talking to, the worship team was there. So I was like, hey, musicians are coming here. And they will be intimidating others. They will be intimidating, I have been a musician before. Musicians come and attend the conference. And they want to check what you're playing there. They will intimidate you. So I looked at him and he's like, my friends are not me. I'm not intimidated by anybody. I will intimidate them. When he said that to me, I was like, this man knows his game. You can only say that when you know your game. But you will always wash your hands in the air when you are not really too sure 
about your game. You can't even drive a trough of oxen because you're not sure about your game. How can God anoint you when you're not sure about your game? And now, when Paul was anointed to become an apostle, where was he? He was a killer when a centurion, a leader of an army. Oh, when David was anointed, where was he? God does not anoint anybody who's doing nothing about themselves. Because he knows if you've got no ability to do something about yourself, you have got no ability to do something about his kingdom. Because if you are not faithful with a little, you will never be faithful with the men. Do you know that the people that you follow on Instagram, they are paid to post? They make money to post. When are you have posted? I lot, but you've got nothing to show for it. Even now, even today after church, you are going to be taking pictures. You are going to post yourself. Who will pay you to post yourself? Hallelujah. Somebody shall say, step up. Let's finish. Mama, read. So Elijah went from there and found Elisha. El Elijah so did what? Went there and found Elisha. Shake so your neighbor and say, neighbor. Elijah is on the way. Elijah is on the way. To find you. Hallelujah. Get up and do something. Somebody needs to hear me. Shake your neighbor and say, neighbor. Elijah is on the way. Get up and do something about yourself. Shake your neighbor one more time and say, neighbor. Elijah is on the way. Get up and do something about yourself. Say, get up and do something about. Somebody shout and say, get up and do something about yourself. I don't know how to say it in English. Who fuswa? Who the eat the fuswa? Huh? This is something English. Huh? We wake up the one that wakes up itself. What are you doing? You show. Listen to me. Father, in the name of Jesus, bind that microphone now. Listen to me. You are doing nothing to showcase your potential. But you say, I'm called by God. Pastor, give me the pulpit. Hey, go to the park there. Let's hear you. You want my pulpit next year? You will only, I will only take you from the park when you are preaching. You just want to rise up out of nowhere. You just want to come out of nowhere. Now, as long I've been holding this revelation, I need, a, I need, I need, I need the pulpit. Yeah, there is the pulpit by the park. You must have a track record. Oh, and now you want this pulpit? This one, this one that I sweated for. At Saratoga with three people. I started with three people. I preached like the hall was full. I have a track record, man. Some of you are not working yet. God, God is giving you that opportunity to create a track record of who you are. Oh, let me give you this testimony. So this woman that I prayed for yesterday, she fixes um, Apple computers. She uses the old ones, not the new ones. And she said to me, so I told her, I need a backup machine. So please, I need another machine. She's like, my husband left a lot of scraps. The whole room is full of scraps. And, and she, I said, why don't you throw them away? She says, no. Now that you've spoken to me, I am going to, I'm building machines. And I'm going to give them a signature, legacy. So I'm building machines. There are a lot of people that are tired of these new Macs. They want the old ones because they've got USBs and what I'm building them. I'm building another one right now for a man in Australia. I'm using the scraps. She says, I'm not employed by Mac, but I'm gonna build Mac. I'm gonna build. She's 70 years of age. She can build a Macintosh computer. You can't even build Goya Drada. <laughs> because you can't step up. I'm going to tell you, why do I go to your brother? Eh? Oh, yes. Eh, yeah, that wire car. The one we used to play with. Eh? Sometimes you, when you drive in rural areas, you find boys, they've made them, they're selling them. They sell them to white, go to Pumalanga, they sell them to white people for their children to play with. 
And when you sit here in Johannesburg, full of opportunities, full of... But you don't have the desire to step up. But you're waiting for Elijah. Where will Elijah find you when you're not findable? Because you're doing nothing. I love that word. Signal. Because it is you doing something that will send the signal for Elijah to find you. You would think Elijah will find you, city. I'm in the air. I don't know. Do you think Elijah is going to find you? Jump. Huh? You must rise from being a property manager here and own your own company. Manage all the properties around GP Town. And people, when they come and say, if you want a property manager that will manage GP Town, there's a young man there. What? You've stepped up the game. You are waiting for your parents to die. You think they've saved money. You will get a shock of your life. You will get the shock of your life. I'm telling you. Not in this day and age where people are cashing up policies to make ends meet. You will get the shock of your life. Do something for yourself. I, I, I got an Uber. Gift. This one is for you. You must listen. I got an Uber. I was so impressed, guys. When I got an Uber, and it looks like a gift one, this, this young man says to me, I, I, was, I was driving my car for service. When I, 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 I think I posted about it. Because this was an experience I've never had in my life ever. I sat on that Uber. As soon as I sat on the Uber, I'm, 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 I'm asking myself, why is this young man not taking off? A voice spoke. Welcome to the best Uber in town. We're going to be taking off right now from Midland, and we are going to be landing in Grindstone. It's going to take us this time around. We're going to take the N1, blah, blah, blah. If you need medication, there's medication under your seat. You can talk to the driver. If you need coffee, there's coffee and water next to you. Blah, blah, blah. Sure. And at the end, it says, fasten your seatbelt. Enjoy your ride of the best Uber in town. Wow. I was shocked. This young man turns to me. says, my name is Busiso. I'm going to be your driver for the day. When I checked his shirt here, it's written, I am Busiso, your driver. He, he starts driving me. Now he caught my attention. I thought I would be reading, preparing for meetings for work. He caught my attention. I started asking him, hey, what kind of an Uber is this? <laughs> Hear me? Because if I don't finish, I'll finish next week. Listen to me. He says to me, no, I own the trademark. Because I wanted to take a video. He says, you can't take a video. This is my trademark. We are building an app to take over Uber app. And this is going to be a South African app. He says, I'm a civil engineer by profession. I stopped my job to do this. He says, I, these cars, I own 16 of them. I went and negotiated a deal at Nissan. They gave me 16 of them. I'm like, are all your Ubers like this? I'm like, all my Ubers are, are like this. So here, here's my WhatsApp number. When you go to, to collect your car, please, please, send a WhatsApp an hour before on this number. I remember because I love things. I sent a WhatsApp. Another driver came. The same etiquette was used. How many Uber drivers do you have? But this young man says, I'm taking off. Step up a little bit. Step up a little bit. No, I, I can see what others are doing. Just a little bit, not too much. Just a little bit. Pony, you want to move with majority. You are not ready. Just come on, just a little bit. Huh? Your earrings can be, can be marketed differently. Just a little bit, just a little bit. And be different from the others. And challenge the status quo. You started selling. Where is it? You're not selling anymore. What happened? Since you started working, you think that job is going to last. You started selling. You stopped selling. When you were not working, you were selling. Go back to your selling and step up. Hi, man. Step up. Somebody shall say step up. Somebody shall say step up. Hallelujah. I, I think I'm going to close here. Done. Elijah is coming. But you need to have a signal. When he's coming, what are you doing? You know there are people that glorify their poverty. You know there are people that glorify their pain. Penny is special. 
everyone that meets them must know that they've got pain. And some of you are looking at me, you are hating me. Because you don't know what I've been through. Do you know what I've been through? Oh, no, let's not cheat one another. Do you know what I've been through? Do you know the battles I had to fight to be here? Huh? Papumuzi was asking me, I don't want to say this, but let me say it. Papumuzi was asking me, hey, Papumuzi, ah, you are not paying stock fell. I'm like, it's paid. How? I'm like, don't ask. Keep quiet. Shh. It's paid. Why? Because we have to do what we have to do. Oh. No, we don't go out. And it's a sokola. He, he, he. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. When they go home, they're drinking tea about you. You think they're praying for you? Oh, look at him. He's just sitting there. He doesn't have money. Doesn't have petrol. Doesn't have this. Yeah. They're talking about you. Shut up and step up. Now, now I'm angry with the devil. And I'm angry with the church. We can't serve a big God and remain small. Hi, we must refuse, guys. We must have holy anger. Refuse. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. You, 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 you had given up in life. I told you, you can be a CA. You can be an accountant. Now you are writing articles. Don't forget me. And don't end there. We want to come there at the city of Johannesburg and say we have come to, to see the auditor in general. Who is the auditor in general? Pumuzoma Shahu. Are you hearing me? Results might come back at the end of the year. Maybe they don't look like the way you wanted. And uh, dust off yourself. Go back to school. Step up until you get it right. Stop glorifying your failures. As a church, we must be a church with a difference. How do we cause the difference? By stepping up. I finished writing the scripture in Ecclesiastes. We will continue next week. Don't miss next week. You must come fastening your seatbelts and put a bandage for your heart. I'm telling you, I'm giving you a warning. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1. Huh? What does it say? It says to everything. Ah, uh, talk to me. Say to everything. everything. Uh, you're not talking. Say to everything. Ah, uh, you're not talking. Shout one more. Say to everything. everything. Now, gossip to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, when the Bible says everything, it includes me. It says to everything. There's a season. I want to speak to the church this morning. Hey, now. The fact that the rent versus the dollar is low does not change your season. Doesn't affect your season. To everything, there's a season, including your season. Your season is coming. Your season is waiting. Continue driving the 12 oxen. Continue plowing until your season comes. Now watch. It says to everything, there's a season. Number two, it says a time. For every purpose under heaven. It also includes me. There's a time for me. It's not yet here. It's coming. It, it, no, it has not yet arrived. Tell your neighbor, the neighbor, wait for it. Some Sundays I won't be here. I won't be preaching here. I'll be preaching in Nigeria. The time is coming. Some Sundays I won't be preaching. I'll be preaching in the States. That time is coming. I will not rush it. My Elijah is coming. When the fullness of time has come, he will find the signal. He will collocate me. My time! It's coming. Show me any woman when labor pains have come who's got the ability to stop the birth of a child. No one can stop it. As much as no one can stop your time. Because to everything under the heaven, there's a time. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, here are your children. We are getting out of our comfort zone, moving into our growth zone.
We are stepping up as a church. We are doing better as a church. In the mighty name of the Lord God Almighty, I pray in the name of Jesus, young people are doing better. Married men and women are doing better. Single parents are doing better. The older ones are doing better. The children are doing better. We are all doing better. We're going to become a better church. We're going to become a better community. We're going to become a better, a better people. We're going to become a better nation because we are stepping up. We are stepping up. If the Zimbabweans can do it, if the Nigerians can do it, if the Somalians can do it, we can also do it. The church of Jesus Christ, we are stepping up. If the Muslims are doing it, if the Shembes are doing it, we can also do it. If the ZCC are doing it, we are stepping up. In Jesus' mighty and precious name, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice to have sleepless nights. Mighty God, if they are lazing around, may they have sleepless nights. May you appear in a vision in them and show them the direction to step up. In Jesus' mighty and precious name.